Howdy. Welcome back to the Rhinestone Roper channel. My name is Dan Mink. I'm here today to talk about Rhinestone Roper performance tips. And I got the idea about doing this because of some comments I got and I appreciate those comments. Before we get started, uh, go ahead and subscribe and after you subscribe, press that little bell. That's called notifications. That seems important to some folks. And like and uh, I appreciate it. Let's start talking about your performance. So where do we start on performance tips? Well, you got to start with creating a show. And you can't create a show unless you've got some skills, if you're a Wild West performer. So start with your skills. What interests you the most? What sounds fun? Well, give that a try. If it's fun, you stick with it. With me, it was uh, ropes. You know, when's a good time to start practicing? Right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> and every other day for the rest of your darn life. So pick something you like, because if you're going to be a Wild West performer, your time is going to be spent practicing. And your time is going to be spent alone. So, so get used to that idea. You know, no one is going to want to practice as much as you do. That's just, uh, that's just the way it is. And that's okay, because you're the one with the dream. And that's what it is. It's a dream. It's your special purpose. When I was in college, I did plays and, and choir and band. And all that stuff, being on stage, was, was great practice. And I had a choir teacher wanted to take me under his wing. But I said, I think I want to be an entertainer. And he says, Dan, you know, this is Patrick Walliver. I don't know if you're out there still, Mr. Walliver. But he was excellent. He said, you know, you don't want to be an entertainer. The only people that should be entertainers are people that just have to. They can't do anything else to be happy. That's what they have to do. So I took his advice and became a lawyer. But after seven years, I quit that and started a show. So if you're interested, that means it might be your special purpose. So get started practicing. Watch other entertainers, uh, ask them questions about what they use or how they do it. You know, be smarter than me. I was too shy or too proud or too something to ask questions. I started with stuff that was tough to work with. And it took me forever to learn the tricks because I didn't have anyone to teach me. But if you ask questions, you know, nowadays you got this internet stuff and people like me and people like all the other guys out there, you know, you can contact them, ask them any question you want and they'll tell you. And if they don't tell you, you know, shame on them. But it's no reflection on you. Actually, it might be. If they don't tell you what you need to know, then they may be afraid of you. So take it as a compliment. But practice, practice, practice. You're in any stage, any stage of your development of your show, you don't know what to do, then practice. It'll come to you. Your wife leaves you because you're gone all the time. What should you do? Practice. So in your, you're in your practicing stage. One thing you need to practice is being on stage. Any way you can get on stage, you do it. If you know one trick with your rope, you look for an opportunity to get up in front of people and do that trick. Be willing to work for free. So get on stage. You know, being in a choir, if you have a good conductor, he's uh, there's lots of good things to learn there. That's kind of a long commitment. But shorter commitments include plays. If your community's putting on a play, try out for that play. You know, pick, uh, watch the director or watch the people who have the leads. Maybe you've got the lead. But there's someone good, someone that can teach you something. You watch how they make choices. And that's what this business is all, all about, is making choices. Everything you do on stage is a choice. And if you're just going through your show and you don't think you made any choices, then there's a whole bunch of stuff you might be leaving out. Little things you could do to make your show sharper and bring the audience in better. You can watch other actors and other entertainers to find out how they do that. You get on stage with them. If you know one trick, and it's a rope trick or a whip trick, and, and you feel like you're pretty good at it, you don't have to be the greatest in the world, you just have to be pretty good, and there's someone coming to your town at your local fair who is has a Wild West show, you go up, you introduce yourself, and, and spin your ropes and, and show interest in what they're doing, you know, they may invite you to be in their show. Anyone who came up to me and wanted to show me their rope trick, you know, they ended up in the show that night. You know, I didn't introduce, introduce them as a pro. It's a local person that uh, wanted to, to practice a rope trick in front of an audience. And if they failed, everybody's glad they got up and, uh, and gave her a try. And we'll, so we'll get them back uh, tomorrow, see how it works. And if, uh, if they succeeded, boy, the local, the local audience goes wild. So you go up and, and show your stuff to that performer who's visiting your town. You may end up on the show, and that's good experience. Everything we do has to be practiced 
really in, until you can do it without even thinking about it. Because when you're doing a show, you got a thousand things to think about. Many things can distract you. Some of your what you're doing has to be automatic. What comes next kind of has to be automatic. Because if you're thinking about what's next, then what you're doing right now may fail. And getting up in front of people is just one more skill that we have to practice. And you can only practice by getting up there. As you're practicing, things will start to fall in line. You know, what am I going to do? I need a roping routine. I don't need just roping tricks. And that's true because you don't want to be the person that gives a roping demonstration or a whip demonstration. You want to be the show person. So as you're practicing, you know, certain tricks will, will start to flow and, and you'll develop a routine all by yourself. But it's important you see the whole thing in your mind as a show. It's a big production. It's something special. So create your show as it's a big deal. And you need to create it in your mind as you're doing your tricks. You're thinking think about it all the time. What can I do in my show? I'm going to start out with this. And then should you tell jokes? You bet. You bet there's time in your show to tell jokes. You want to make people laugh during your show. You want to amaze them with skills. You want to make them laugh. Most of all, you want them to know how much fun you're having because they're there having a good time and you get to do your tricks. And that is the funnest thing in the world. But it's all in the purpose of art. What you're creating is art. It may be a rope trick to us because we practice and practice it. it may be just a practice, a practice thing. We may not be that talented, but we're willing to practice. But it's an art. I've had entertainers tell me, they say, you know, I, I've got all the stuff I can do and I don't set a show. I want to make every show spontaneous and I want to wing it. I don't know, I didn't see those folks on the road at all. <laughs> so, so I don't know if that works for them or not. I suspect it didn't. What you want to do is you want to set a show. You want to put your best, your best order and your best tricks and have a solid show and you do that show every single time. Don't worry about changing your show. The show is going to change itself. <laughs> and we, have, if you have kids, you know, the kids, you get them a, a good little DVD, that limpy guy or, or, or SpongeBob or whatever it is. They'll watch that thing a thousand times, the same episode. They don't care. They like it. They'll come back. And people at the fairs are the same way. Fairs are, are special because if you get a 10-day fair, that's great. And you'll do three shows a day. You got 30 shows to get it right. And you're trying to do your best show exactly the same every single time, you're trying to do it perfectly. You know, and a few of those shows, you're gonna get it perfect. But I've had people that uh, have come back every day for every show. And towards the end of the fair, they'll say, you know, we come back here every day. I must have seen your show 20 times already. And these kids, they, you know, when it comes time for your show, they leave whatever they're doing. They wanna come back and see your show. And what's amazing to me, they'll say, is you make every show different. <laughs> you know, sometimes I tell them, I'm trying to make it the same. It just comes out different. <laughs> but if you're working with things like ropes, and you're working with things like whips, and you're working with things like people, audience participation, and if you're telling jokes, and sometimes they laugh, sometimes they don't, and if you're working with an animal, you know, we work with horses in the show, you know, these shows are not going to come out the same, depending on the uh, the volunteers you bring up, you know, they may stretch things out, they may make it short, they may good be good, they may be bad, your tricks may work, they might not, and in response to that you may do something else to cover up for it. You know, the horse, who knows what the horse will do when they come out. They're supposed to be funny, they have a routine, sometimes they hit it, sometimes they jump ahead, sometimes they won't do it at all, and then I gotta repeat something, and they think that I changed the show on purpose. Well, good, as long as they keep coming, as long as they stay in the audience, as long as they stay in the bleachers, that's all we want. So so don't worry about making it different. It's gonna come out different no matter what you do. So have confidence in your show, don't wing it. People who wing it are afraid to commit to what they've already created because they don't think it's good enough. You know, if you create the perfect show, why would you wanna wing it? That's perfect, just do it this way. You know, you, you don't wanna be afraid. You don't want to be afraid of being wrong. You don't want to be afraid of putting a show together that's no good. And you don't want to be afraid of not being good enough. You know, you just do your show. You know, you can't wait to do a show till you're the best in the world. Because unless you're doing a show, you're never going to be the best in the world. The best in the world got that way by performing because we're showmen. You know, you can't be the best rope tricker in the world or whipcracker. You have to be the best 
showman with the rope, or the best showman with the bullwhip, or the best showman with a knife. So you can't wait till you're the best. And let's face it, you may never be the best. I'm not the best. You know, I've got some world championships on those days. I was the best. But who's the best on a given day kind of depends on who showed up to be in the contest against you. <laughs> or just how they did that day. You know, I've been in, in gut spinning contests where I was good enough to win. I should have won, but guess why I didn't? Because I sucked on that day. So, so don't worry about being the best. And if some, if you're do, being a rope sprinter in a show, you know that place probably didn't hire two rope spinners, and probably no one has practiced ropes as much as you in the whole audience. You know you only have to be better than 95% of the people in the audience think they could be. You know, because people misjudge what's difficult and what's not. But uh, if if a bunch of the people in the audience think, oh, I could do that, and I'll sweat, then, then that show won't work. Uh, if they actually could do it, it doesn't make any difference. It's whether they think they could. You know, you want to do tricks that you can do that they think they can't do. And that's perfect. It doesn't make any difference how hard the trick is. But the best roper in the world, if there is a best roper in the world, he's not going to be at your show. And if he is, he's only one guy. You know, you don't want to perform for one guy. <laughs> you're performing for that crowd. So you don't care who's in the audience. You don't care if you're the best guy. You're probably the best guy at that fair. And certainly you're the best guy on stage at that time. And that's all they care about. You know, push all those other thoughts, all those insecure thoughts, push them out of your head. They're not going to help you. When you're in this stage of putting your show together, you're going to want to talk to people about it. Well, don't do it. There's only a few people you can talk to. You know, talk to experts to get advice. Yeah, I've got enough to do that. It'll prevent you from having to reinvent the wheel. Don't tell your friends. You know, I had a best friend come over. He says, what are you doing? I says, oh, you know, I just got the butterfly. I just got the butterfly. It's a great rope trick. He says, well, let me see. So I take my rope out, did the butterfly. He said, is that it? <laughs> Don't talk to your friends. You know, most people are not going to understand what your goal is. You know, if your goal is to have a show, your goal is to travel, to be away from home all the time, to do a show here and then do a show here, and, and you know, people don't understand that. You know, what about church? You gonna go to church on Sunday? Well, sorry, I'll be working on Sunday. You know, they don't understand that, but there is someone, you can find someone. Everyone, I'll bet, everyone has someone who thinks they're just better than sliced bread. They think you're the, the best in the world. You th they think you're exciting no matter what you do. That's the person you talk to. And unless that person's help, that person thinks you're great, they're willing to help you out. They're willing to follow you to that to that show you're gonna do and film you and take pictures. And at the end, they'll say, that was great. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> if they took pictures and filmed it, then you don't need them to give you criticism. You watch it and you can, you can you can kick yourself all you want after you watch it. So those first videos you make, uh, they're going to be so disappointing. At least they were for me. Because you have this image in your mind. You went this way and I did this. Now it was, oh man, that was great. And then you watch it and go, oh crap. That's, that sucked. i got to work on that. But find that person that thinks you're great and is willing to help you. That's the way to go. You know, you, you need to get your equipment, your show equipment, the stuff you're going to use. But the other thing you're going to use is a mic. You know, you need to be heard because you're going to have to talk. You know, these tricks don't sell themselves, really. And you're probably going to be your own announcer. So you're going to need a mic. You can't hold a mic and talk. You might want to sing while you're doing some of this stuff. Or you might want to talk while you're doing it. So you want a headset. Another entertainer, you know, told me you need to get one of these, one of these mics. You know, the, the transmitter is in the headset. And it's small as far as the, uh, the transmitter pack mics. Sure. S-H-U-R-E makes a real good one that's not too expensive and they, they're reliable, last long and, and after a couple seasons of sweating on them then you need to replace them. But they're not that expensive. These, these are about the same price, maybe just a little more. But uh, this is made by Samson and it's a, it's a headset, one right there. And the battery is inside the thing and it's rechargeable. But uh, Samson uh, makes this and, and I really, uh, really do like it.
And as you go, you probably should uh, get your own sound system. This is a Bose system, B-O-S-E. You know, and people can't tell where the sound is coming from, and it's loud enough to perform in a hockey rink. Uh, this one only has one section on the tower because the ceiling's so low, but uh, the other section goes in. The uh, high frequency stuff comes from the top, and the bass comes from from down low. It's just wonderful. You set that up uh, any place you're performing, the the sound just goes all over. People don't even recognize that as a sound system. And you need to be looking around to put together a costume. We have a tradition that we pay attention to. Our tradition as Wild West performers is, uh, is built with the cowboys. It's enough to go to town and get their pictures taken. They dressed up. They put on their costume. Here's a bunch of cowboys right here. They dressed up to come into town. They're getting their picture taken. Every one of them has a great big gun belt on. Every one of them has a, a gun sticking out. They all got all these shafts. They look like a rough bunch, but that's, I believe that's their costume. And I can show you why I think they dressed up. Okay, as you take a look at this picture here. On here is a bunch of Texas cowboys stopped for lunch. They're there at the chuck wagon, their horses are tied in the background. And I'm looking at their clothing. You know, several of those guys have two pair of pants on because the outer pair had a hole in the knee. I only see one, maybe two pair of spurs. There's one gun in the bunch. I don't see any belts with, with bullets in it. I, and I see maybe two pair of shafts. The rest of these guys have, uh, have heavy pants on. That's what they wore. That's what they're out there punching cows with. And there's a long history, long history of Wild West entertainers. Starting with this guy. Oh, Buffalo Bill, look at him. He wouldn't have gone anywhere without being dressed up. Uh, boot chaps. Uh, he didn't have a pistol on, got a fancy fancy coat on. And the women are the same, of course. Here's Annie Oakley. She's all decked out for her show. All the rifles, uh, decorative skirt. And here's another stylish gal. You got a great outfit, spurs, uh, boots, you got her gun, you got her whip. She's all ready for the show. We want to be dressed up also. You know, you can uh, be, uh, you dress up like Roy Rogers with fringe and and, uh, and some accents on their clothes. Uh, go the other way and dress up like uh, Curly Bill or, or uh, Johnny Ringo. Go the outlaw direction. You want to give people something to see when you walk out. You're going to be a showman, so you might as well dress like a showman. You know, and you're going to need to be if you want to get into the, into the higher paid jobs. You need to give people something to look at. Maybe your face is pretty enough, or maybe maybe your hair is pretty enough. I didn't have those advantages, <laughs> so I chose the Roy Rogers style. But you want your cowboy boots, you want a big hat, and. Uh, and spurs, actually. Well, there's some tips on getting started. Don't wait, just do it. You have a chance to perform your stuff. If there's any way you can, you just say yes. If you watch this video all the way to this point, you have a desire to put on a show. <laughs> so do it, don't wait. Don't wait to feel like you're good enough. Just do it. Someone asks you to do something, you know, some of your skills you've been practicing, Say yes every time. If there's any way you can, you say yes. We learn we learn this as we go. You know, we're not gonna have it all figured out before you start. You have to figure it out in progress. So, have courage. Get out there and do it. Uh, press like and subscribe, hit that little bell, and uh, you might wanna take a look at these next videos we got coming up. Today we've been talking about preparing your show. Next is getting the gig. And the last one is actually performing. I've enjoyed talking to you about this. We'll see you next time.